Hello everyone. We will be starting the class 11 anatomy of the flowering plants chapter. We have already started with one chapter of class 11 as well as one chapter of the class 12. Class 11 we have started with the plant kingdom and class 12 we have started with the genetics. Anyways parallelly with those chapters these chapters also will be dealt. So we are starting with the class 11 anatomy of the flowering plants. Of course along with this class 11 plant kingdom class 12 genetics as well as another chapter of the class 12 will also be taken and very soon as I had promised I will be also uploading the question papers. So to start with the class 11 that is anatomy of the flowering plants. What do you mean by anatomy? Anatomy is the study of internal structures. It is the study of internal structures. So now what do you mean by these internal structures? See when you see a plant you can easily identify the parts of the plants that is root, stem, leaves, flowers, branches, fruits, seeds. So these are the plants which you can observe when you see the plant through your naked eyes. So these are called as the external characteristics which we study under the morphology. Coming to the internal characteristics that is every part of a stem for example we have stem, roots, leaves, so many things in the plant, right? So every part of a stem, every part of a leaf, every part of a root. So what are these parts made up of? What kind of cells or tissues are present in the parts of the plants that we study under the anatomy? Of course, the cells which are present in each and every part of the cell are not similar. There will be dissimilarities in the cells. So we will study what exactly are the dissimilarities and what are the similarities present among the cells of the different parts of the plant. So, but anyways, we all know that cell is the basic unit of life irrespective of whatever type of organism it is. Whether it is a plant, an animal, a microorganism, whatever it is, the cell is the basic unit of the life. So we shall start it from the basics now. Cell, which is called as the basic unit of life. Fine. Many cells together, many cells together will form a tissue. Many cells together will form a tissue. And many tissues together will form a organ. And many organs together will form an organ system which will give rise to an which will give rise to an organism. This is how it proceeds. Cell, the basic unit of life, we have a separate chapter to study this. So let's not speak about the cell because irrespective of whatever type of cell it is, I said the cells are not similar all over the plant. The cells are def definitely dissimilar. But however and whatever the dissimilarities are, the basic structure remains the same. The cell may be of different shapes. You may found the round shape. You may found the polygonal shape. Or you may found an elongated shape cell. Whatever different type of cell it might be. And whatever function it may carry out. The basic structure of the cell remains the same. That is, the cell has the nucleus. The cell has the cell organelle, cytoplasm. The basic structure will always remain the same. So, that basic structure of the cell, we will, we will study it in the cell, the unit of life chapter. So, in this anatomy of the flowering plants, we will pick it from the tissues. What is an tissue or how do you define the tissue? Tissue is a group of cells. Tissue is a group of cells which are from same origin which are from same or common origin common origin and perform and perform common function and perform common function so Tissue, tissue is a group of cells which are from the common origin and, from, and they perform the common function. It means that, let's imagine we have a 
patch of tissue. This is a tissue and in the tissue whatever cells we have, all those cells they are from the same origin. They should be from the common origin and together this tissue should perform one single function. For example, if this is a tissue which is performing photosynthesis, all the cells in the tissue should be involved in the photosynthesis. It is not that half of will involve in the photosynthesis and half will involve in the storage. In that case, we cannot call it as a tissue. All the cells, if we are calling it as a tissue, all the cells which are present in the tissue should definitely perform the common function. If they are not performing the same function, then we don't call it as a tissue. So, a tissue is a group of cells which are from the same origin or which are from a common origin and they perform the common function. There are many different types of tissues present in the plants. So, we will see what are the types of the tissues that are being present in the plants. These tissues are being divided or they are being differentiated on the basis of the capacity to divide. Capacity of division. Capacity of division. Whether the cells are able to divide or they are not able to divide. We have two, cell, two types here. So, the first type is the meristematic meristematic tissues the first the first type is the meristematic tissues and what are the meristems they can divide they can divide then the second one is the permanent permanent tissues and what are these permanent tissues permanent tissues are the one which cannot divide, which cannot divide. So, these are the two groups of the tissues which are present in the plants. That is, meristematic tissues and the permanent tissues. Meristematic tissues, they can divide. Permanent tissues, they cannot divide. Now, these meristematic tissues are further being classified into Two groups again. The meristematic tissues are being further classified into two groups. And the two groups are primary meristems, primary meristems and secondary, secondary meristems. Primary meristems and secondary meristems. Now, what are these primary meristems? Primary meristems are the one which usually grow or develop in the early phase of the plant life. So, you can divide a plant life into two phases. That is early phase and the late phase or the juvenile phase and the mature phase or the primary phase and the secondary phase. So, this early phase or otherwise which is called as juvenile phase or otherwise which is called as a primary phase. This is a growing phase actually. And then the secondary or the mature phase or the late phase are the one where the woody stem or the woody axis start developing. So, primary meristems, they usually develop in the early phase of the plant life. Anyways, each and every part or every word which we have written here, that we will see in detail. This is just a schematic representation of the types of tissues present in the plants. Primary meristems which are formed in the early phase of the plant life. Now, this primary meristems are again being differentiated into various types. And the types are apical meristems, apical meristems and the intercalary, intercalary meristems, apical meristems and the intercalary meristems. These are the two primary meristems. Now, under the apical meristems, you can again find the shoot apical 
meristem and the root apical meristem shoot apical meristem and the root apical meristem and apical meristems these are the meristems which are present at the tip intercalary meristems these are the meristems which are present between the mature tissues or mature cells that we will see in detail in the next class coming to the secondary meristems secondary meristems these are the one which usually appear in the later phase of the plant life that is after the origin of the early meristems or the early cells or the primary cells which we call as the primary meristems after the development of the primary meristems in the later phase the secondary meristems are being developed and these secondary meristems they are also called as the lateral meristems lateral meristems and there are three secondary meristems which we will be studying in this chapter and those three are the first one is the cork cambium cork cambium second one is inter inter fascicular cambium and the third one is the fascicular fascicular vascular vascular cambium fascicular vascular cambium these are the three secondary meristems present then moving on to the permanent tissues of course these three will be dealt in, dealt in detail in the chapter permanent tissues what are permanent tissues so a meristematic cell after the division okay a meristematic cell after the division one cell will lose the capacity of the division see what happens is let's imagine this is a meristem this meristem will divide to give two cells after the division what happens one will re, one will remain meristematic only that is they still they will be having the capacity of the division another will differentiate into permanent cell that is it is getting specialized or it is getting differentiated it is getting matured and these cells are called as the or these cells will form the permanent tissues the meristematic cells when they divide they differentiate into the permanent cells or the specialized mature cells which are called as the permanent cells and they together will form the permanent tissue now which are the permanent tissues in the permanent tissues again we have two types one is a simple permanent tissue simple permanent tissue another one is a complex permanent tissue one is a simple permanent tissue another one is a complex permanent tissue which are the simple permanent tissue under simple permanent tissues we will be studying parenchyma parenchyma then the colenchyma colenchyma and then the sclerenchyma parenchyma colenchyma and the sclerenchyma then under the complex permanent tissues we will be studying xylem and the phloem okay complex permanent tissues we will be studying xylem and phloem simple permanent tissues we will be studying the parenchyma colenchyma and the sclerenchyma so these are the different types of tissues which are present in a plant so we will, let me repeat it once again tissues there are they are being divided into two groups based on the capacity of the division if they are able to divide we call them as a meristematic tissues and if they are not able to divide we call them as a permanent tissues meristematic tissues are of two types that is primary meristems and the secondary meristems primary meristems they usually develop early in the plant life 
and they are of two types. One is apical meristems, other one is intercalary meristems. Apical meristems which are present at the apices, that is the tips, and they are shoot apical meristem, root apical meristems. Intercalary meristems, they are present between the mature cells. Then secondary meristems, they usually appear in the later phase of the plant life. Then they are also called as the lateral meristems. Which are the secondary meristems which we study in the chapter are corp cambium, interfascicular cambium and fascicular vascular cambium. Moving on to the permanent tissues that is the cells which have lost the capacity of the division. So here they are being differentiated into the simple permanent tissues and the complex permanent tissues. Simple permanent tissues we have parenchyma, colenchyma and the sclerenchyma. Complex permanent tissues, xylem and the phloem. So these are the tissues which we will be studying in detail in this chapter. In the next video we will take up the meristematic tissue and see what are the different types of tissues in detail. Thank you.